This is Algebra 1, Semester 1. It's the third unit called Graphing Linears, and it's the second lesson called Slope Triangles and Intercepts. And usually I put a practice here, so let's put a practice on this. It's on creatormath.com under the Algebra 1 tab. You might have to Google creatormath.weebly.com to find it on Google. The instructions are copy the following problems into your composition book on the correct pages according to the table of contents with the notes for those pages from creatormath.com. So I typically try to show students where these notes are. It's a little bit hard to find. Here's the website, creatormath.weebly.com. If you type that into Google, hopefully you can arrive at this home page. If you have any questions about the composition book, uh, there's a lot to it. And all the answers to your questions are on this website. If you scroll down and find the words composition book, follow these directions, watch these videos, adhere to these turn-in dates, and put everything where it belongs, okay? There's instructions on where everything goes, on what page, if you number the pages according to the video that's in the videos. Um, we're going to switch over to the tab of the class of the video we're making. This is where all of the notes, the video lessons, the problem sets, and the vocabulary are. So if you're not getting 100% on your vocabulary practices, you may not know that there's a complete PDF with all the vocabulary words for this entire school year. You can download it to your device, and it is searchable. Just Google, how do I search a PDF on whatever type of device you're on, and it will give you instructions. It's different per device. Now I'm going to scroll. Make sure you're scrolling to the semester for which is appropriate for you. In this case, we're scrolling to uh, semester one. We're looking at the table of contents. These, every line of this table of contents should have been written by you into pages two through six of your composition book. That way you're going to know on what page everything goes. And we are now going to go to the unit we're in. This is the unit on not equations, not inequalities, but graphing linears. And linears is another way of saying lines. All right, so graphing linears. We are on lesson number two. Oops, sorry about that. We're on lesson number two, slope triangles and intercepts. This goes on these pages in your composition book. Please don't take this video's word for it, but go back and see the original table of contents. At the time you're viewing this, these page numbers probably will have changed. Here are the notes, here are the problem sets we're gonna go over, and the video solutions will be linked here when they're done. I often have to open the notes twice. Uh, this happens to be a picture of the board. Um, but you're gonna go through, and it talks about slope. Slope is usually not new to students at this point in their math career, but we're going to go over everything from slope is rise over run to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to delta y over delta x. Of course, delta means change in, change in y over change in x, and that's what y2 minus y1 is. It represents the change in y's and the change in x's. So does delta here. This triangle symbol is a Greek letter D, delta. So... It talks about rise over run and calculating that for this instance, we're rising one, we're running two, so it's gonna be one over two, it's a slope of one half. Another symbol that we use for slope is M. So you see M equal to one half would be acceptable too. find the right triangle. So this one is on slope triangles. The interesting thing about slope triangles is they are every bit slope except they do not have the negative. So in slope, this line up to the left would be a negative slope. But in this case, because it is a slope triangle, the negative is neglected. So we're going to end up with a slope triangle that is positive, a rise of 1, 2, 3, and a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3 over 5, but there is no negative here because it's a slope triangle, not a slope. Okay, but nonetheless, the right triangle helps us to envision what is going on here. And that is a direct link. We'll do slope triangles again in geometry because of the right triangle. All right, note, the difference between slope and slope triangles is that slope can be negative. Slope triangles cannot be negative, right? So an interesting play on how to understand slope a little bit better. Here's an airplane. The person's 3,000 feet from directly below the airplane, and the airplane is 2,000 feet from that point. So it creates a triangle here. Notice it's a right triangle. But we have a rise of 2,000 feet and a run of 3,000, so 2,000 over 3,000 cancel out all the zeros. We get a slope triangle of 2 over 3. All right, no negatives. It's um, reduced to the um, simplest form, right? So 
we have absolute value. That's in the definitions for this lesson. We have a slope triangle. We have more on that. Altitude is what we call the distance of the airplane from the ground. The height of the airplane is a perpendicular height we call altitude. Right, so all of that should go in your notes, and that will help us answer the problem sets we're about to do. So what is the definition of slope? More than one answer may apply. It is rise over run. That's true. It is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. That's true. It is delta y, which is change in y, over delta x. Right, so these are all acceptable. All these are right, all three of these. And there's actually more, de uh, more definitions than this. Slope is also m. Right, what else can I think of? Slope is also, well, I can think of M right now, right? Let's see what else we got. Um, what's the definition of a slope triangle? Slope triangle is the same thing as slope, except there is no such thing as a negative slope triangle. So it's going to be just like slope. So if this one says including negative, it's out. And if this one has a negative, it's out. That's the big difference between a slope triangle and slopes. There is no negative to a slope triangle. So given the following graphic, what is the slope triangle? More than one answer may apply. So the slope triangle, let's find the right triangle in here. So here's a right triangle, right? Here's a right triangle. Here's a right triangle, right? So there's right triangles that repeat all across here. So right being 90 degrees in one of the angles, right? So um, if we count rise over run, let's count this way, rise and run. Notice there's a right triangle there. Notice if we went up to here, there's another right triangle, right? So it depends how we look at this. Now there's another one up here. There's right triangles all over the place. Well, we want to do rise over run for our slope triangle too. So we rise one and we run two. So one over two is one half. This is correct. Rise over run, no negative. That's correct. Rise over run, including negative, no and negative, no. So these two answers look correct to me. One half and rise over run, no negative. All right, given the following graphic, what is the slope triangle? So let's see. So this one would be negative if it was a slope because it's up to the left, but because it's a slope triangle, it's not. Let's do a rise over run. Let's take a point here and a point here where we intersect the grid of the graph. We rise one and run one. One over one equals one. So we're going to have one. Rise over run, no negative. But if we were actually looking at the slope, we would have a negative. This would be rising one and then going to the left one. It would be one over negative one, which would be negative one. This is the slope. But the slope triangle is a positive one. So these two here are the right answers. This is out because it says including negative, And this is out because it's got a negative on it. All right, what's the slope in this one? So the last one asked for slope triangle. Now it's asking for slope. So we already did this one. We went, you know, point to point. We rose one and went to the left one. One over negative one equals a negative one slope. So rise over one run including negative, true. Negative one, true. Nope, not the one, not the no negative. Okay, so now it's the opposite of this in terms of because this was a negative slope, but a positive slope triangle these answers reverse depending on their sign for these two problems, trying to give us a, con a compare and contrasting situation of slope versus slope triangles. All right, given the following graphic, what is the slope triangle? Well, we have to do rise, which is 2,000. We have to do run, which is 3,000. We don't care about any negatives. So in one way, slope triangle is a lot easier than slope because that's often a very challenging aspect for students is the negative aspect of slope. So, so slope triangles sort of help us understand the basics and then slope we take it one step further with understanding a negative slope. Anyway, the zeros cancel and you're left with two over three. All right, so we got two over three. Rise over run, no negative. That would ac account to 2,000 over 3,000 is right. No, it's not. You know what? I don't like this one because it's not simplified to the lowest level. We should simplify it to two-thirds. We're not going to put in 2,000 over 3,000. Rise over run, including negative, no. I like these two answers here. Given the following, what is the y-intercept? Very interesting. So remember the concept of intercepts. This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. If we have a graph cutting across them, where it crosses the x, this is called an x-intercept. All right, and this is called a y-intercept. Y-intercept. Right? And of course, because intercept means cross, the graph is crossing these axes at these points. The y-axis is always vertical, you guys. 
The x-axis is always horizontal. Memorize that. It's not going to change. I remember one time in high school, I was like, do these change? Do these move around? Like, is that part of the problem? Nope. This is a solid construct that you can, uh, foundational construct that you can put in your mind and keep that way. It's not going to change, all right? So um, in this case, they want to know what's the y-intercept. Where is it crossing the y-axis? Right here at negative 2. Okay, that's it. That's all they want to know. I know where they're headed. They're headed toward y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept, and this becomes negative 2 in y equals mx plus b. And then we have a slope and an x. So if we could calculate the slope of this, we could get the, um, the equation of this line. Slope is rise over run, 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1. We can simplify that. We can get y equals 2x minus 2 is the equation of this line. All right, and we'll plug it into Desmos right now and do it too if they give us a chance. Nope, they're just going for y-intercept. Given the following, what's the y-intercept? So here, 1, 2, 3. Um, it's 3. Okay, 3. Done. They're warming us up to graphing by just asking what's the y-intercept only. Make sure you are matching the title of this video with the title of the practice set you're doing. Otherwise, it won't make much sense. This, this is Algebra 1, Semester 1. It's the third unit called Graphing Linears and the second lesson called Slope, Triangles, Intercepts, Practice. Slope, Triangles, and Intercepts, Practice. Okay, so um, hope that helps.